Now, while well, that uh, shit's going on back there, you want to take this tear gun and just chop it up as finely as you can. Because what we're going to do is, with the grenades, we're actually going to add some of this to the finished product. It's going to give it a really nice flavor. Okay. I think this is actually reduced to the point we want it. As you can see, you can see the actual line from when we added the liquid to what, what it's reduced down to. Now we're ready to make a Bernays. Bernays sauce is actually a, it's, it's, a, it's a couple hundred years old. It's a sauce made from egg yolks and clarified butter. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is we can do three egg yolks. We have to separate the egg yolks. It can be any type of eggs you need. Doesn't have to be any special egg, okay? Um, what I like to do is I like to just keep like a little dispenser here for the egg white and put the yolk right into the, uh, um, the actual me metallic tin that we're going to use here, okay? Okay. So, it's a tricky business. The best way to separate an egg yolk is you get two halves like this and just kind of roll them between so you get all the white out. That's, you don't want any of the white in there. The reason why you don't want the egg white in there is because it's the egg white is not as as much of a binder as the egg yolk. The egg yolk is going to have very high coagulation properties. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm taking these egg yolks and get them nice and scrambled. Now, what I like to do, what, what the, one of the sauce chef's tips for making any type of Brunei's or hollandaise sauce is take it and add just a little bit of water. I'd say maybe just a tablespoon or a teaspoon. Just put that in there. as well as a little bit of salt here. You can add salt later, but you want to put a little bit in the beginning just to kind of season it. So we got this really reduced, really pungent, like tarragon, vinegary, beery type thing, okay? So what you want to do is you want to just take one tablespoon of this, okay? Mm -hmm. Add that. You want to try to, like I'm not measuring, because I'm an idiot, but you really, <laughs> you really want to measure this stuff out, okay? And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to make a sauvignon, which basically means you're going to take the egg and the mixture and kind of whip it so it's nice and bubbly. So you put this, I have this thing right on the heat, okay? Mm -hmm. and the heat, you see the smoke? The whole bowl is going to get pretty hot. Though. Yeah, that's why I'm using, make sure you use a towel or some sort of a, a, something that's going to absorb the heat so you don't burn your hands. You want to get this so it's, it's kind of like a... Looks like a little bit of a sauce. You want to get it so, so it has a very nice and light whipped quality. Now you can pull it off. Well, the most important thing is, is when you look at the bottom of the bowl, you want to make sure nothing's cooked at the bottom of the bowl. Okay? That's when you're done. So the next step is going to happen immediately. Okay? When you make a Renee's, the toughest thing is, is your sauce breaking on you. So you can take the same towel that you used, get it wet, You wrap it around the bottom of the bowl like this. The bowl is still going to be hot, so be careful. Okay? You take your clarified butter, and as you're whipping it, you add this butter in. Now, why do you have to... I've always wondered why you have to keep moving it like that. I mean... Because you want... It's the same thing with the marinade. You want it to emulsify. Because if you just pour it in there, it's not going to emulsify with the cooked egg. Right. You want it to be a sauce, you don't want it to be two separate entities. Now the cool thing is about this, is as you're doing this, once it gets to a certain point, you don't have to worry about stirring it as vigorously as I'm doing right now. Okay. As you can see, see that? I mean, it's just, this sauce is just going to be so decadent and luscious, I mean, it's Look at that pure butter just going into this. <laughs> it looks like it's loaded with fat. It's, oh, it's disgusting a little, little bit with fat, but it's going to be absolutely amazing once you eat it, okay? I'm very close to the end here. Don't get any of those salads in there. See, that's, that's, I'm a wild man and that's how safe I feel right there. I don't want to pour any more because if I get the salads in there, it's just going to ruin the plate. Okay, so we're at the point where actually our Bernays is done here, okay? So I have the tarragon I chopped up earlier. We can add this fresh tarragon just right in there. Then we're just going to add a little bit of salt. I mean, this is all to taste here, guys, so you have to taste what you're making here. And then I have a little bit of cayenne pepper. Now, just be careful with this because 
a little bit of this, especially in a Bernays sauce, is going to do a lot. So I, what I do is I pour it in my hand first, and I just want to do a pinch. Just a little pinch right into there. Maybe just a little bit more, okay? Do not put this in the refrigerator. Do not put this on the oven. You have to store this at room temperature. What I do is I just would cover this and wait till when you're going to serve it. Just keep it at room temperature, okay? Mm -hmm. Next thing I'm going to do is we're making asparagus. Take a big pot, put some salt in it. The reason why we put salt in the water is because it actually locks in the flavor of whatever you're putting in there. So anything that, that's happening, sodium acts as a barrier between the boiling water. It's going to cook it, but the flavor is not going to get out. So with asparagus, it, the easiest way to deal with it is just place both hands in it and whatever it breaks is what you're going to use. That's, that's, the bottom part is uh, some, some asparagus break high, some break low. Either way, it's telling you what you want to use. What I like to do, and you don't have to do this, okay, is I like to peel a little bit of my asparagus off, okay? It, gives, it takes off some of the rough, rough edges and it gives it a little bit of better color too. Because these like little thorny parts here, they don't have any flavor. Um, you can't really tell because the asparagus is so flavorful, but if you want to get those off, you can make it look a little bit nicer and make it taste a little bit better. Take this and throw this into this very hot liquid. Uh, five to six minutes. Do you want to play by ear? It all depends on your tenderness factor, how tender you want your asparagus. Okay, it looks like these asparagus are pretty much tender enough for me to take out. Okay, so that, that's called blanching. The shocking part is basically just taking it and stopping the cooking process. So I got a bowl here. You can use ice water. You can use, you know, cold water. It doesn't really matter. You can use a, uh, you know, a perforated bowl if you want to. You just want to stop these things from cooking. So basically, you can just. This is just a comparison. Here's the original. It hasn't been chucked. This one's been peeled, blanched, and shocked. And you just can see it's a much nicer product. It's just nice and clean. You don't have to worry about the thorns. And you can see that. Asparagus only has a little purple in it. All the purple is gone. Just wow. nice and green. 